A lot of people know what it is, TV sound system, we're live and direct. We're at the Heritage Centre inside Wolverhampton. We're going to have a massive discussion with some of the best b-boys um, inside the city of Wolverhampton. We're talking about the Paris Olympics 2024. Was it a good look? Was it not a good look? Listen to and watch the content that's coming your way in the next five seconds. TV sound system, you know what it is, select a hype, like, comment, share and subscribe, you know what we do. It's a crazy thing. And this is probably one of the first interviews I'm doing that's away from sound system culture and away from the sound system thing. But you know what? You know, if you know select a hype, you know from day one, my thing is hip hop, breakdancing, graffiti. The whole element of hip hop culture is my thing. Everybody knows that. And just so happened that a few weeks ago, we had the Olympics. And for the first time, breakdancing was in the Olympics. Mad controversy behind it. Mad people talking stuff on the internet. Some people are talking facts. Some people are talking rubbish. I sat back and I listened and I read the comments and I thought, nah, I'm not having this, man. I'm in a city where breakdancing has been thriving. I've got family members who created history on this thing. So all I could do is use my platform, use my channel to say, you know what, let's talk about breakdancing at the Olympics. Did it make sense? Did it make not make sense? Let's just talk about it. So right about now, inside the Heritage, I've got to say a big shout out, reaching out to Carl or the family of them at the Heritage Centre in Wolverhampton who give me the space right now to do what I'm doing. But I'm going to introduce, or let them introduce themselves, some of the best, the pioneers, the new, the old, in this whole breakdancing scenario. And then we're gonna kick it off. So, from my left we have... What's good ladies and gentlemen? Kid Ronin representing Reckless. Uh, I'm AJ, AJ the Cypher Cat. Uh, not repping no crew right now, but repping myself, repping wars. Yeah, I'm Hanifa. I'm accepted as the first UK B-girl from 1982. Um, throughout to 1986, and I still continue in the scene. I'm Pablo. I've done a lot of coaching and teaching and stuff, and that's my story. Can I just say, um, I just want to give a shout out that I represent TBB, TBG, representing all day, Batch, Abby, you know, looking at the presidents of the dance, you know, the fathers and the mothers of the dance. Got to give them credit, you know. Now, people, I'm not even lying. They're, they're, looking, they're looking mad humble right now, you know. But we've got, some big, we've got some big people inside the place right now, you know. Trust me. So we're, we're going to go straight into it. Obviously, first of all, Bob's cousin. Yeah. Hadifa, first, first B girl. Are we talking like first B girl in history? Yeah. I mean, like, I started when I was, what, 12 years old, yeah? And back then, it was the, you know, it was the early scene of b-boy break dancing you know because i'm going to touch down on the true meaning and the difference with a b-boy and a break dancer because there's two different things you know people don't realize this you have to understand that you have to understand the culture and the elements of break dancing and the b-boy there's a there's an element you know so when when i look at things like the history and look at how much it's changed over the past you're talking about 30 40 years yeah. And that's a long time, you know, and to see that the dance is still here. And after 40 years, I'm seeing a new style of break dancing, as they call it. You know, even though for me it's b-boy, you know, rocking, you know. For me personally, it's changed. It's, it's got to the stage where I'm almost um, alien to, like, what is going on, you know, the new style of dance. And, but I'm, I'm keeping up, you know. I'm still there in the scene. I'm keeping up because I've got my family here who's even part of it now. I mean, with a legacy here, you know, born and bred Wolverhampton and be representing. But the one thing what I need to, you know, make it clear to people is that, you know, the hip hop culture here in the UK, when it started, I've got to give a shout out to sound system, the culture of sound system. If it wasn't for Jamaican sound system, there'd be no hip hop in the UK, in, in the UK itself. Yeah, the sound system, we have the big up all the original sound system. Cosmas, Skip and Lippy, you know, Wasifa, V Rocket, you know, I gotta give a shout out to all the pioneers, Saxon, you know, Coxon, I have to give a shout out to all of them, Love Injection, the whole of them, 
because the roots, they, it, they are still, it's here. Yeah. And by the way, you're going to hear some patois come out, so you, you know it go. <laughs> you know it go. Rassi, we're warming in, you know. I told you, I told you we're warming in, you know. This is the first time. I, yeah, I know. We're going to, and this might continue. It's always the, the, the start of something. But we are here because I really want to just be like, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of the hip hop culture. Um, from from break dancing to grief, graffiti to freestyle, just just the whole culture is just one of the best genres and cultures that's that I've actually seen the birth of to reach where it is right now. And um, again, we fast forward, 2024 they had the Paris Olympics. Break dancing was one of the sports that they says that they want to enter. So my first question. And I'm going to go around, I'm going to start with you, Omar, and then we're just going to yeah. go around. So, so my first question is, what was your thoughts when you first heard about breakdancing was going to be at the Olympics? I was nervous. Um, th don't get me wrong, I was happy. I thought it was like a really big opportunity. It's a lot of eyes. Yeah. But at that point, I'd been around a little, like I'd been around a little long enough to know that there's always pros and cons to things. So I was a little nervous and I was mainly just hoping that as a community globally, we were gonna organize well enough or be allowed to, to make sure it was done correctly. So that was my main thing. But generally I was kind of positive about it. I wasn't too aggy, but I wasn't like completely gassed. I was like, all right, this is interesting. Let's see what happens. All right, cool. And AJ, Olympics, Paris. Um, Bray dancing was there. How did you feel? Um, I was gas fam. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, obviously, I was. Uh, I had the nerves as well, but I just, I just kind of put it to people are gonna say whatever anyway. If I'm like, no matter what we would have done, mm. a like I remember the date was announced. There was already like comments just saying, oh, like it's just dancing, this that blah blah. So I was like, mm. they're just gonna say something anyway, and. Obviously, I was kind of used to that car when I was doing breaking anyway as a kid. That's mm -hmm. what people would do. Like, oh, you just dance, blah, blah. So I was like, fam, we're in the Olympics, fam. Like, mm -hmm. it can only go up. From right? okay. The way I saw it was, we're, we're up now. So mm -hmm. I just seen it as that, fam, really. And likewise, Bubbles. <laughs> well, well. Well, hear this. Um, when I first heard about break dancing in the Olympics, I was very, you know, optimistic. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel it straight away because mm. my background, my culture, breaking was from the streets. It was a ghetto thing. It was something that we had to relate to with the environment where we were. So I didn't think it would be suitable for the Olympics. But at the end of the, you know, at the same time, what I was thinking is we've already got battles you know, we had break mission, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. IBE, we had B-Boy Summit. Mm. We have B-Boy World, you know, controlling own Dimi and I'm doing own a thing. You know what I mean? So I was saying to myself, we don't really need the Olympics because if we do, the, the culture would die out. That's what I thought. I thought the culture's gonna go, the, the culture's gonna die out. Yeah, and yeah. that was my first um, <coughs> thought. Is it gonna be, you know, controlled by us or by the corporates? That's, that's my thought. And to be honest with you, I was thinking I'd rather see it where it is already rather than see it in the Olympics. And that was my first thought. Mm -hmm. My thoughts on it, I, I was pretty positive, to be fair. Because everything evolves and it's all, it started from the streets, but then everything has to evolve to something else. So I've seen it as when it's going into the Olympics, it's going to be a positive thing, even if it fell flat it got today it got all the eyes on more people gonna see it and then yeah. more people gonna be involved in all mm -hmm. those um events as hanifa just said i said hanifa not bubbles yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of people them don't get it twi yeah don't get it twisted though the, the the number one f the one the number one female b girl in the world history she's here you know she's like you know it's kind of crazy so I'll do my best. I just cause sometimes I might, there might be three words, you know. You might hear me say Hanifa, you might hear me say Bubbles, or you might hear me say Cuz. But we were, we were all dealing with the one Empress in here, you know, still. Um, Omar. Mm. 
I, I, w- I wanted to have you here because I think everybody else will agree was like, you probably know a little bit more behind the scenes of how this whole thing pops off. So for me, like my second question is, and if you, if you don't know, um, just saying, and we can keep, like, keep it moving, is how did, how did countries qualify to get into the Olympics? Is that something that... Um, I can give like a basic thing. There might be things mm-hmm. that I might get a little incorrect or so on and so forth. But um, essentially, once the announcement had been made and there had been a, the initial judging system sorted out and approved by the IOC because mm. it changed later on near oh. the end actually okay um, essentially there were competitions and a competitive circuit set up around the world under the WDSF and uh, at their time quote-unquote breaking division and essentially it was people battling to be high enough in the rankings based upon how they did in the competitions okay right um, and then each continent also got a continental championship essentially so uh if i remember correctly i could be wrong but uh, there was a european championships in manchester and that was either 2022 or 2023 i think 2020 for example danny dan got a straight ticket in so if you were one of the continental events Mm -hmm. you were given a straight pass through and i think they did that for each continent because obviously the olympics priority is to have people from across the world so we got europe the pan-american the african the Pan-Asian and the Oceanic Championships and the winners of these. So, mm-hmm. for example, Danny Dan, um, I believe Victor, Sonny, uh, Billy won Africa, mm-hmm. El Mahuni won the African as well. That's how some of these people went straight through and mm-hmm. then everyone else. For example, um, B-Boy Lee, they were people who ranked high enough outside of those specific mm-hmm. events as well. And when you call, when you call them names, because obviously there's going to be a lot of people that are watching TV <laughs> sound system, <laughs> And are, are these certified names who who, who you're talking yeah, about was, now who would well deserve to go through and, and be part of the competition? Yeah, you will lead 99.999% of the people you got there. It was not a case of just wishy-washy people, mm-hmm. you know. It was people who have been competing and doing bits globally for a while, for a yeah. minute. Some of these people since before we came yeah, into... Yeah. I mean, not Miss Hanifa, but, you know. I mean, Hong Ten's a great example. He reached the Olympics... Hong Ten's been one of the best in the world since 2002. Mm-hmm. I didn't start breaking until like 2010. He's already been certified for eight plus years yeah. at that stage, you understand? Uh-huh. Um, so there was no one there for the most part who was like, hang on, who are you? The only people that you could have questioned would have been people from lesser known regions. And that's just a case of their lesser known regions, right? So B-Boy Billy from Africa. I can't. I think it was Morocco specifically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. El Mahuni. These are not nations which have a lot of eyes on them. So mm. it might be a, I don't know who that is. But then when you saw them get down, mm. they're obviously the levels. So yeah, okay. that's generally how it worked. Okay, cool. Fine. Anybody want to elaborate on that at all or anything? Um, Omar said, you know, Omar, um, because you have the, the generation. This is where the generation, I'm not going to say it's a gap, but there's a generational um, like hierarchy kind of thing with the B-boys. And those who entered and won, it's like, I'm not saying it was um, inevitable that they were going to win. But, you know, like you mentioned Hon- Hong Ten, yeah, he's yeah. been there for a long time now. Mm-hmm. Even when I left the scene and came back, he was still there. Yep. So people like him, if, for example, if I heard that he didn't make the Olympics, I'd be thinking, what's going on here? Something yeah. don't yeah. sound right Certain people you could kind of... It sounds bad, not to discredit anyone. Anyway. You can yeah. almost predict it. Like, if the, if they've decided to take the shots, mm. more time they're making it. Victor was a great example. Victor had a run, I think it was 2016. Every major competition in the breaking world, he won. And he won it effortlessly. He was taking everybody out. So as soon as we heard Victor was taking his shot, I was someone who was saying, yeah, that dude's meddling. I don't know where he's meddling, but he's going to meddle. So, yeah, it happens. Okay. Okay, cool. The next question... So we've got 10 and we're going to try and get like, you can't quick fire them, you know, because yeah. there's, everybody's got their own little piece of everything. So my next one is like, um, so for me, breakdance is in, is in the Olympics. I'm like, all right, cool. I get the chance to sit down, got my drink and I'm watching. Yeah. The, I'm watching and then I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. But then I'm thinking, how is it judged? What is it judged by? So my question is, how do you think 
a a, a set or, or or some how how do you get how do you judge somebody or, or how do you think it should be judged? What is the skills and everything that you need to see from that person in order for them to to qualify or to win? So there was a judging system set up initially and written that I know was being worked on before the um, announcement of a sketching, yeah, yeah. even before the Youth Olympics, which was 2018. Mm-hmm. And I was being worked on primarily by um, Kev Gopi, a.k.a. Renegade from the UK, and Niels Rubitsky, a.k.a. Storm from Germany, because they had felt that we needed a more concrete, coherent way to judge breaking as opposed to just leaving it up to every individual who happens to be able to judge. The whole understanding that breaking is a skill, but just as teaching is a separate skill, so is judging, right? Um, so they created a judging system called the Trivium. Um, you can still look up the stuff on like Google and YouTube yeah, to clarify, because I'm not going to get it all right. Mm-hmm. But essentially they broke it down into three sections, which was, I think it was mind, body, soul, and then each of those sections was split in half to break down some kind of criteria, which might be the wrong language according to them, that would encompass what they were looking in breaking. Mm -hmm. That system was then, in their words, watered down further to then what we saw, I think, by like the last two qualifying events and the Olympics itself, Mm. where, and I could be wrong, but it can be looked up. It's on like breaking for goals Instagram. The five categories, which were, again, off the top of my head, Originality, execution, musicality, something else, something else. And are those, are those, are those, um, sorry to cut you, mm-hmm. are those the same um, rules that would apply to any other B boy competition? I or is, it, is, is that different because it's the I Olympics? I think it's what people would keep in mind even if they don't realize it. Mm-hmm. I think we all do it, right? We all watch Breaking and on some level, we can watch breaking and say, hey, I'm looking at your top rock, your footwork, your power, your yeah. phases. But then past looking at are those elements present, you are looking for those aspects. Are you executing correctly? Is your form mm-hmm. good? Are you on beat? Yeah. Even if you do not consciously and actively acknowledge that's what you're looking mm-hmm. at. And I think that's what the judging system was supposed to do. It was supposed to distill and bring together what we all kind of tick over in our heads, yeah, yeah. even going back, 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 back to yeah. the 80s, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But then mm-hmm. put it in something a lot deeper and be able to train people to think about it a lot more clearly, I okay. think. Okay, all right, cool. AJ, um, how did you find the judging? Do you think that was the way judging should be for breakdancing at the Olympics? And if you was in that position, how would you... How would you make the judging um, in, in your eyes? Uh, I'm not going to lie, fam. The way that I would judge it, it, I, it was really close to the way that I would judge it. And okay. This is going to sound so mad, fam, but I think the best judging that I, that's ever been like a thing was in B-Boy the game, fam. It, man played that game. <laughs> man played that game, fam. And the way that they judge that, you have like... Medals. You have the medals, yeah, fam. <laughs> you have the medals, fam. So, so for anybody, so for anybody who does who doesn't know, what is is that a game? Is like a B, yo, B boy, the game, fam. <laughs> like on the PS2, yeah, you create your character, do the battle, yeah. Is that what we used to play? I'm just talking to my son behind the scenes. Is that, is that the same one? Oh, it's different. Yeah, it's a different one. Okay. Floor kids was floor kids yeah. had like the same thing. So. Oh, that was that the BC one one. Yeah, 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 yeah fam. So. Okay. With, with, with B-Boy the game, yeah, you'd have foundation medal, which is obviously your top rock, your footwork, your freezes, like your basic power, like mm-hmm. backspin, windmills, head spins, 90s. Then you'd have the, the musicality medal, where you have to tap it in time. You get the big yellow, yeah. like just dance, you get the gold um, tap, hit the freeze, you get extra points. And then you had um, flow, which was... How good you get from top rock yeah. down to your footwork into power, like, because it was kind of like street fire, innit? Like, mm-hmm. you have to, yeah. And then you have blow ups. Is that the last one? I think the last one was blow ups. Yeah, yeah. So that's like your entrance. You could do moon kick, do your flip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see the blow up just go boom, um, bronze straight away. Mm-hmm. And then you do air flare get your foundation up that's bronze but then you do air flare one hand air flare that would get your blow up medal to silver yeah, yeah. okay so it's like 
it's like yeah it, it's yeah. close uh-huh. so when i heard the judging i was like oh they do musical it, it's it was basically the same as that uh-huh. so, so you was I, happy with the judging i was, I was calm with the judging okay like, cool yeah. and then when i was watching it it i could see that those following like what they was saying like mm-hmm. yeah that person won because they did more of this or that one was close because they did more musicality but their performance and technique was better and okay you could just yeah you could see it so mm-hmm. i was happy with he was it. happy with the thing yeah man. um bob's uh hanifa. hanifa yeah man you have to remember i know they could pick me again you know <laughs> yeah so yeah how do you feel about the judging um Watching, okay. Firstly, there wouldn't. There's nothing I wouldn't do in it different. To be honest, let, let me get to some point because you have to remember, I'm from the '80s. We're now in 2024. You yeah, understand? Yeah. It's a different culture now. Is it not different culture, but it's a different culture of, of how things are done. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, like for example, in my days, you have to judge by the move. So in b boy there was um, there's a criteria. Top rock first, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Then you down rock, how to get down on the floor. Mm-hmm. And then it's your power move, what you do, the footwork, the power move, yeah? And then it's a freeze. Mm-hmm. That's all it was, really. It's still the same today. However, there's a, a little bit of addition because back then, we didn't judge on the music. Today, we do. Mm-hmm. And how you dance to the music. But back then, the music gave us that, you know, the energy to perform. Yeah, so I can see why they use musicality today. My days, we didn't use musicality, yeah? And we didn't so much have a judging system, yeah? yeah? Our judging system back in my days was a crowd. The crowd made the most noise, it's the winner, you you know? And that's how we did it. And you have to remember one thing as well, you know? When When you come into certain events, each event's got their own, you know, judging system, you know? And, you know, the key thing here is that they still use the same elements. Top rock, your style, your down rock, the power move, and the freeze. How do you freeze? You know, do you freeze on the music? You know, you know the, the horns, the stab of the horns when you freeze. And all, the, all those elements will score you high if you perform all those tight you know yeah. this is my days back in the 80s this is how we do it yeah today when i saw the judging on the tv screen i couldn't figure it out however yeah. when i watched it the b girl who i thought won won yeah you understand because i know how to judge the moves yeah the b girl who i thought scored very low did score very low and as I watched it, I was trying to figure out what kind of judging system are they using? Because I couldn't understand it because I wasn't following in terms of the judging system. Because yeah. one of the um, only few judging systems when I judge is normally just, just points. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. you know, you point at the winner and that's it. You know, but today judging systems, you know, there are so many, but the key element of judging is still there. The, you know, the top rock, the style, the power moves, the freeze, you know, the, listening to the music, how you perform. And, and that's how it is today. So I wouldn't do anything, any different to what I saw. Likewise, Pablo. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything different either. Well, I just want to say that um, I think the judging system was supposed to help the general public yes. understand this. But what's happened is you have to go and search yeah, to, to to, yeah, you have the to search. Poor. Yeah, you have to yeah. search for it to find out what they was judging on and on and all that stuff. There, where I think the general public would want to see it straight away in their face, like spoon feed them kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah so can, can I just add to that, bro? You see, I, I know you're gonna get onto Beagle Reagan, yeah, but this <laughs> this is the point I'm making. You know, yeah. putting fun and joke aside, do you know what it is? Um, I've watched videos of her performing and somebody recording her and laughing at her. And I can't see what they're laughing at because, in my opinion, I see her do the top rocks, I see her do the down rocks, I see her do the footwork, and I see her do a freeze, you know? So I don't know what they're laughing for. They, they turn it into a real gimmick. However, I'm not talking about her standard now. I'm talking about did she perform, yes or no? Yes, she performed. Was it a good standard? No, it wasn't a good standard, you know? But yeah, so when it comes to the judging systems, you have to know what you are judging. Like I said, I didn't know what system they were using. However, when I watched, 
the the winner who I thought won won. Yeah. And who I thought scored score very low, it was low, you know. Wow. So in Massive you know what it is TV Sound System, we're here, we're talking breakdancing. We're, we're going in, you know, we're halfway through. We've got five questions. I did have two more, but they literally covered the judging situation by themselves, single-handedly. So thank you so much for just giving up so much information on there. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. And, and again, we'll just, we, we, we start with Omar. Sorry to put you on the pressure. The first oh, it's thing. all good, man. Um, UK. Mm. Did UK have a representative? And if they did, I didn't see them. And if not, why wasn't there a UK representative? Okay, so um, in the process of qualifying, essentially, we had three B boys. I, I don't believe we had any B girls. If we did, my apologies to you. I don't. I don't. Did they get very far? I don't think they got. You two might know better than me. I think she was trying yeah. at some point, but yeah. I know she just had the baby or something yeah. as well. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a lot. Um, but she got there, you know what I mean? She was there in, in terms of her, you know, credibility was there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So. But um, the three guys that we had who, for the entire qualifying process that we had was Sheku from Devon, yeah. Karam. Can't call him Kid Karam no more because his name is Gruen. <laughs> um, from Derby. And Sonny, who's from like Bristol slash London ways, um, all three of them were climbing rankings, climbing rankings up until the very final events. Um, I can't remember the specifics of it, but they just didn't quite rank high enough. Yeah, like literally, yeah. last hurdle didn't quite get past yeah. in the very end. So it's not that we didn't. It's not that it was not happening. Like yeah, the yeah. work was there. They were putting yeah. in the graft. Okay. Man, we're getting past injuries and all sorts, but. It, just last heard or things didn't yeah. quite get there. Yeah, uh, they had to go through the OQS qualifying. And that was like two years of trying to qualify yeah. you know, just to get into the Olympics. I think one yeah. of the major ones, sorry to cut you, Mike, yeah. was um, at the European Championships I mentioned in Manchester. Off the top of my head, because I was there, I'm pretty sure the finals was Karam and Danny. Mm -hmm. That would have been the easiest way for one of us to get in. And Karam just happened to lose in the finals to Danny. When we yeah. consider Danny took silver medal, in no way, shape, or form is that a yeah. put down to Karam. That yeah. just tells you what the levels are. So, yeah, we had our peeps there putting in the work and all props to do him, just not quite, you know. Yeah. yeah. And Sonny ended up just not making it by like two points. Like a yeah, points off. that's what I'm saying. Last hurdle, really yeah. close. Do you, think, do, you think, do you think the skill level was just, was it, was it down to like skill level? school levels because I'm on, I'm going to be like sitting on the fence and just see what's going on on social media this is the reason why I kind of like called you guys to come here because some people were saying there's nobody in the UK that could even match anybody that was in the Olympics right now but then I watched the Olympics and I'm thinking you know let's change like you're like not talking sense man because I've been places and I've seen very very good break dancers and who should at least have been there. And then I look at, and this is just me just mm. seeing what I'm seeing. Um, like for the terms of like BMXing, yeah, and skateboarding, yeah. Yeah. I, seen the, I seen UK really backing yeah. the girl who was doing the BMXing and really focusing on her and saying, BMXing is now in here and so and so. And I thought, oh, you, you're bringing all that. And I think BMXing and skateboarding and breakdancing is, is still part of so you know what I mean? It's that, it's that part it's of the hip hop culture, culture you know. Yeah. It's that street culture, and I think they didn't they didn't do enough, I think, for for pushing the UK thing. I don't know how you guys think about that. In terms of the school conversation, um, I'm be very careful our phrases in it. Mm. Car to be very clear, all three of these guys smoke me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah? so be very clear. Um, in the regards to Sonny and Karam, Sonny and Karam have been running around internationally doing bits for a long time yeah. so they're definitely in the class of these other guys just maybe slightly further away from yeah, yeah. where they needed to be in Sheku's case he's just started in the past few years making that noise mm -hmm. so in his case maybe it's a little lack of experience at that level just yeah. just from timing in he's he's not been out there long enough you know 
it's a lot to get flung in at that space. You know, yeah. I don't, people can't, AJ can tell you, AJ's yeah. competed at a higher level than me. Um, just being dope and having the moves doesn't mean anything. The pressure in competition and at different levels of competition is different, you know? I used to do athletics when I was younger. Sometimes, yo, you might be able to run whatever time you run in training, but if you can't run it at the meet, it doesn't matter, you know? That's, that's the difference of experience, you know? And in regards to the BMX skate talk, BMXing and skating in terms of infrastructure, I don't know if it's more support, like, but they have a better infrastructure in the UK mm -hmm. than we do. So, for example, the UK's like level dance wise rose massively, especially London when they had Trocadero, mm -hmm. and this is what late two thousands, early twenty tens. So there was a space people could train in London all day, every day, free. So people went crazy, right? And it created a bit of a divide for the rest of the UK to a point because other people didn't have that space to train like that. But BMXs and skaters and in the UK have more spaces like that across the board than breakers do. So that is part of the reason why their level, I don't know what their level was like globally prior, but that's part of the reason why they're able to hang a little easier than we can in breaking because yeah. the um, infrastructure's there, the support's there. You know, training spaces, it's as simple as that. Training spaces. You know, if someone gives you somewhere to train free all day, every day, and you're about your business, yeah, yeah. you're going to train all day, yeah. every day. And even if your training's not particularly effective, yeah. something's gonna happen, isn't it? You know? Um, you see, you have to remember one thing, you know, that when you're dealing with um, skateboarding and BMXing, that's something that you do outdoors, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for breaking, we, we have to be um, accommodated. So we need, we need the right floor, Definitely, you know, that's the key thing, the floor, you know. BMX in, they could do it here on the carpet. I'm not saying that as B-boys we can't yeah, do yeah, on the carpet. Yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but we have to remember where does the dance come from, you know what I mean, and where did it begin, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. BMX started out in the street, on the street, on the concrete. You know, not saying that B-boy didn't, because it did. But you have to remember, it, it, we're dealing with another culture here, in a mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. almost like uh, like a different entity you know what i mean kind of thing yeah but just to come back to um to the the b-boys now in the uk again i'm speaking as an old school b-girl and how i saw um the the b-boys of today and ha when i watch them like at um bc bc1 and when i watch ibe b-boy summit when i see the uk b-boys their standard is very high yeah definitely high I was shocked because I think I messaged you, Omar. I think I messaged you and said, what's happened to the B? Where's the UK? Because I thought yeah. UK was going to make it oh. because Sonny is a good breaker. Yeah. Sonny's, um, he, he's got, for me, he's that unpredictable breaker that you just don't know what he's going to come off with. Shekel, the same, mm -hmm. you know? And this is why I was really surprised that the B, put the B girls aside for now. I just surprised that the B boys didn't get in. And for you to mention that it was only what two points, the, Sonny, was it? Yeah. Was, was yeah. So that is still high. Like, you, you, you see the point I'm making? That's still high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, it shows well. their standards. You, you know what I mean? I have to give credit to the UK B boys because for you to say two points. And then you look at the, the, who they are against with the Pan, Pan Americans and the Pan Asians and the Pan Africans, if you want to call it that. The, you know, the UK is, you know what I mean? Got to be proud of themselves still What's to be up there. Since the mid 2000s for the mm. UK? Because, because you, yeah, mm. because exactly, yeah, yeah, they're up there. And like you rightly said, you know what I mean? Two years before, the, because we found out about the Olympics two years before, is it maybe three years? Before it actually I was out. Well, like lockdown four. happened. So we found probably out four. Lockdown 2018. 20, was, yeah. So it's not new to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. People out there messaging me say, "Oh, did you know break dancing's in the Olympics?" Yeah. It's like I've been, news, I've been going through these discussions for how many years? Old it's old nothing news. new to us. You understand? Mm -hmm. 2018. That's the Youth yeah, Olympics, yeah. and then you had the yeah. yeah. That's what was not long after. So, so in terms of the um, levels, what we have to remember is the UK had to do all those qualifiers. Yeah, old QS for two years, and they only had ten spots. Yeah, 
the, 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 yeah, after there was only 10 spots because all the Continentals took them spots. So even if there was better than some of those people from the Continentals. Do we, we get grouped in Europe? We get grouped into yeah. Europe as well? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was only 10 spots really to play for. So yeah, we're in the, there was, it, there was, it was, it, they, they ranked in the top 16 of the highest level, but still didn't get a spot because there's only 10 yeah. left. That's the re- that's yeah. like part of the reason as well. Do you want to say there's something, Age? There's not that much for me to say, but all I can say is the 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 man them. It was literally what you lot was already saying. Really, it was just it was just the matter of the last man. Like mm-hmm. it, it wasn't it wasn't even like nah. I'm like Sonny could have thing. It was like fam, this close like. But then when you like, yo, he's battling life in, I'm, I'm, drop, I'm dropping names for that card. Mm-hmm. The people that watch it, you need to search these names. For yeah, life man, in, 100%. Sugar Kicks. Yeah. Um, um, who else? Flipping Gravity. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did it make it? Bro, it's uh, crazy. It didn't make it. That was another one I was looking at, Gravity. Wow. Gravity yeah. didn't make it, fam, like. Watch gravity. And this is and this is this is the thing, you know, and I'm not even gonna lie. Big shout out to everybody who, who's watching and logging on right now because two things are gonna happen. Yeah, We're gonna have uh, this is why I wanted to try and expand TV sound system where we can start to talk about and some of these names that you're calling, I know you got links with them. We can start to sit down and have these conversations because yeah. we they're not being noticed and they're not being focused on and not being highlighted on so Really, really thank you guys for just coming out right about now. Um, time is kind of go- against us right now. So uh, like I said, people like, comment, share and subscribe. You know what to do, all that stuff. Um, uh, this, this woman, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to dwell on it at all. Cause I, didn't, I didn't even really want to dwell on it at all. I didn't have anything to... I didn't have any substance to try and get numbers or do anything like that. And what's even more surprising is... The way how you guys are talking right now, I didn't kind of expect what you were saying, which is very supportive of what's going on. Like, I'd be like, nah, I'd I'd be burning a fire on certain things still. (laughs) But I can clearly see how the B-boy culture works. And it's always been working all the time, which is very supportive. And I've been to events where you, you, you see somebody try their they try their hardest and they don't get through yeah. and you can see that they probably get more support than the person who won because the person who won you're a good man but we've got to back and rally around the person who lost because you know say next time will be your thing yeah. so when I talk about this woman who I can't remember her name is um, <laughs> my only thing is like the only thing that I, the only thing that I would want to say mm. is when I watched it I felt very I got vexed because I really thought, don't do this to, don't do this to our culture. Don't do who he, I didn't know nothing about anything, and I just thought that okay then. So when you look at like the Olympics, which is the biggest sporting event in the world, there's nothing bigger. You know what I mean? The sporting events at the Olympics, I didn't even know they had they had sporting events in those categories. So when I seen that, all all I thought was, that's not how I know breaking. And that's not how we know the culture. So the average old person who's sitting down and said, oh, let's watch a little bit of breaking. Mm -hmm. That's what what they're going to see. Like, that's what we do. So for me, I was absolutely fuming. I was like, nah, I'm not not having it. I was really like super vexional. Even vexing myself, I'm watching it again just to get myself even more vexed. (laughs) For for no reason. So my my thing is like for... For authentic people like yourselves, mm. when you sin that, and like Omar, you've been da- you've all been dancing, you've all been a part of this culture. To see that, what 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 was going through your mind? Start with you, Omar. <laughs> um, I so I'm not here for the bullying. To be clear, no, not at all. Right? Not I'm, at all. I'm I'm not I'm not here for the bullying, yeah. but but she's not good right now that being said when people are having these conversations about well how did she get there the australian beagle level especially in terms of those who are trying to compete and get through on a global scale scale is not high yeah Yeah. she happened to be 
in these competing series in, in Australia slash New Zealand, Oceania, the highest ranking person over a number of years in the lowest level qualifiers. Mm. So the easy route, which I mentioned, i.e. win your continental championship, she won the continental championship on the easiest continent, hence she reached. Mm. What she did on stage she gave like a little explanation of her tactics of oh i will never stand up to the power moves and the dead dead air of the other yeah. girls so i'm going to allow my creativity and my tactically yeah. make sense because i'm not the best at power moves so i'm not i'm not flinging power against this guy if i battle him it doesn't make any point so i try and rely on something else but the something else that i do is backed by the fact that i'm actually pretty good at what i do in its entirety what did she do that was not. good what do i do or what did no, she do what did, what did she do that was good to me truth be told nothing she didn't truth do be it. Told, like let me I'm, I'm not gonna speak as harshly as some people i know no 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 she no no nothing There's, yeah nothing and i can also acknowledge i have a bias to what i expect as a standard of b girls based on b girls i grew up around mm -hmm. yeah point and proof uh -huh. um eddie Terror, mm -hmm. point and proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Naya. In, was it? In, yeah. India. Do you understand? So, like, yeah. what I'm looking at when I'm looking at oh, B girls coming up. Then, yeah, that's that's not that's not good to me. But um, I'm irritated. I'm very irritated at. Well, I'm not surprised at how much attention it took from the other B girls and the other breakers. Yeah, period. That, that's my thing as well. Yeah. And then this is where I'm going to be irritated at her. Mm -hmm. yeah. In her time where she should have and could have recentered them in her little apology video or response, public response, she didn't. That was the prime time for her to go. Mm. Shout out to 671, yeah, yeah. to Army, to Nika, to Sissy, to Legis. She didn't. Mm. So, all due respect and disrespect, mm. I don't give a damn about you. Yeah. And in the context of in the scene, hey, yo, if people come for your neck in a the cipher, then so be it. Mm. Right? Mm. You put yourself here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some pe if people want to back her and hold her, completely fine in it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I'm going to give you another question. So I'm going to finish it off with two questions. So that was like how you felt at, at the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the next question is going to, I'm going to say is like, do you think she's tarnished breakdancing for the people who don't technically know about breakdancing, what it is? For people who like to just look on the surface, yes. So people who like to judge book by cover, yes. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, isn't it, right? Pete, and I know that, I, I, I was in the trenches online. <laughs> um, I was in the trenches. Oh, God. Stress. <laughs> but um, for people who want to look past the meme and da-da-da-da-da, mm. no. Right? Um, and if there's a silver lining to it, maybe, for people who thought breaking was some giant impossible thing, I'll never be able to do that. Maybe she's inspired some little girls to go, well, it don't look that hard. Mm. Maybe I can, I can try. I can even back that from mm -hmm. the Yeah, like, 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 go ahead, AJ. The videos, what I was seeing, like, what people was, like, people was laughing at a video of afterwards when she, like, like, there's, like, bare Australian girls that made a cypher for her. She's mm -hmm. dancing. They're all happy for her. Yeah, like, we mm. had a rep, like, I feel like Australia itself, other than, like, the news and, like, the, that's just media, mm. fam. But like the people, like the athletes and the breakers was like, yo, you repped. Like, yeah, we, we, we didn't expect you to be them other B girls. But are we going to really say in Australia, that's the best that they got to offer? It, it, it have to have been. It had to have been. Oh, nah, but they can't. I'm not, I'm, I don't know about <laughs> that still. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do my. There's youngers who are better. Uh -huh. yeah. But the youngers yeah, yeah. couldn't. The youngers, the young, so, okay. yeah, yeah, so the youngers yeah. then wasn't able to go to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too young. A little but girl okay. Called Sam. Sam looks like a. And that was that, that was down to like B. Nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sam, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a different team. Once yeah. in the conversation. They're not 16 year olds or something. 
Because to me, she just looked like some middle-aged woman who she just did. finished she shopping at she Audi and just says, yo, you need to go on the plane, you know. I mean, Here's a hat. For a while. <laughs> she's been doing it for, I think, she, like 10 years or something. She has, like, man. <laughs> but, like, she can't be do- 10 years. Look, everyone can't be missing. <laughs> 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 you'll be. Fam. We're gonna. Oh, yeah, oh. we're gonna. We're gonna say. Hey, so, so AJ. First of all, let's let's. <laughs> how did how did you feel when you actually were like watched it and it says, okay, here she is. I don't want to be honest for too long. Just like be super quick. How did you feel? Like you watched that and says, I'm 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 being different again, bro, but it's honest, fam. Uh-huh. I was still gas. Cause like, fam, okay, she's gonna get memed. What's the biggest thing on earth right now, bro? This meme culture, like... Yeah. If we get memed, people are going to see it. Like, and then on top of that, Snoop Dogg was posting us, bro. Like, who cares? Like, yeah. no okay. breaker cares. Mm-hmm. I promise you, no That's breaker. Point, yeah. yeah, well, no yeah, breaker. Yeah, yeah. Except for them salty ones. Like, oh, why is she on there? And I could do better than that. Bro, like, okay, you missed out on the Olympics. Snoop Dogg was posting us, fam. Like, this is what's going on. Snoop Dogg was there, body popping, and yeah, like, fam, Raygun, Raygun doing that was just like, oh. And then on top of that, I'm seeing people seeing the meme and saying, nah, I don't believe that this is the best. Mm. I don't believe it. I'm mm. gonna go and look. And then coming back on the post and saying, everyone that's commenting saying Raygun's shit, this, that, blah, blah. Go and look at any. Go and look at these people. Yeah. Like breaking's amazing. Okay. This, that. So I was yeah. like, fam, me and my fam, oh, yeah, I'm not really bothered, and she don't care. Mm-hmm. She'll yeah, go she back does. and do it again. Fam, hop, snake. <laughs> she's gas. So, so, so you don't think she's tarnished breakdancing at all? I don't think. I don't think you, you can't tarnish it. Like, it's too big. unless everyone, unless Victor, Danny, and that's all just say, yeah, we're gonna copy Ray going okay. for the rest of it forever, uh-huh. which. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Uh-huh. Can't tarnish it, fam. It's too, too sick. People probably said that Tony Hawk was gonna tarnish skating and blah blah. They got five games in the Olympic. Can't tarnish yeah. it, fam. It's too, it's too cold. Okay, cool. Tanifa, how you feel? Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to the question. What you said. What you know. What was my thoughts when I first saw it? So you have to remember, I'm coming from a B girl perspective now, and this is the first I'm gonna see B girls. You know on this level because yeah. so many b-girls from the uk didn't make it and i was so disappointed in that and i thought let me see what these b-girls got because logistic she's from my you know she's from my crew the tbb we represent the same family tbb tbg you know what i mean so firstly first of all i'm there watching it yeah the girls came up being introduced logistic yeah i know her Next one, yeah, I know her. Then comes Raygon. Mm, I don't know this one. I've never seen her before. But maybe she's got some tricks up there, you know? Mm. So the battle's happening, and I'm there in my mind saying, okay, you won that round. You, know, you didn't score. You didn't win. So when Raygon came out now, the first thing that came to my mind is she's nervous. Seriously. Because there's times when you're out there in a battle, and you do get nervous, and you do forget your moves. When I used to get nervous, I used to just get up and start top rocking until I could think about what to do next. Yeah. You understand? And I'm thinking, she's nervous because this is a B girl who I'm thinking is up there because you've got to be up there to, to enter the, the Olympics. So I'm saying, she must be on a high scale. But why is she doing these kind of moves? I couldn't understand it. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out. You understand? Yeah, so whilst I was looking, well, when I was watching, I, was, I wasn't thinking anything other than she's nervous. So the battle was over and I said, no points. I said, fair enough, you didn't perform well. And I ignored it because I couldn't wait to see the next B-girl. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's, I'm on this yeah. B-girl thing. Yeah. So shortly after, jump online, I've seen all these memes, like all these, I'm thinking, here we go. <laughs> I said, here we go. And then I started to think, yeah, and I'm starting to think, hold on, these people are really taking the, you know, the piss out of this woman, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm saying, but still, I don't know her. I've never heard of her before. The other B-girls are no of them, you know? This is the only one I didn't know. I've never seen her before, yeah. you know? The B-girl from Lith- Lithuania. Lika. Lika, you know? I know I know them, you know, France. I know of them, you know? I've met them. Some of them, I met them when they were young, mm. you know? 
But Raygon, I've never seen her before, never heard of her before. So I was shocked to see the memes afterwards and what people were saying. I think, well, fair enough, she did this to herself. And this is what happened when you had a, you know, you can't fake the funk. You have to be real here. You know what I mean? This is a culture where we, many of us, when we were young, we used to get banished from clubs. We used to get run out of places, you know. People didn't want us, you know what I'm saying? People didn't want us. And, you know, then here comes this white woman, and it's like she's got this privilege to do what she wants to do. And I think it's very unfair to many of the younger girls who wants to grow up and, you know, do this dance and, and be part of the culture. And she's here making a mockery, in my, in my opinion, making a mockery of her privilege and what she's doing. Mm. You know, because there's so many young women that would have loved to be in the Olympics. You know, I could name beagles that would have loved to be in the Olympics. And this woman here, she's just gone out there in which I thought it was nerves. Obviously, it wasn't just nerves. It, it, it's just how she, that's her standard. And it was very disappointing to see. That's the levels. Yeah, that's the levels. Um, you know what I forgot I was going to say? Well, I'm um, yeah, the first time thing. Um, you've seen it. Oh, the first time I seen it, I knew she was going to get memed. I knew she did certain things. I knew she was going to get memed. But as AJ said, we're in meme culture now. So I was like, everything gets memed. Even when boxers lose a fight, they get memed. It's not coming out. Like we've seen memes in, in other sports. So I was like, we can't really take it personal like that. Because it's that's what the culture is now. Everyone's just memeing things. And I just thought, we're going to get so many eyes on us. Because of the meme. Everyone's talking about breaking. They're not talking about no other sport, really. They're talking about breaking. Everything's just about breaking. Even though we're talking about her. Obviously, you talk about that first. Then you go deeper in it. So, that's what it is for me. Then, what's the second question again? Uh, The second question was, do you think she tarnished breakdancing? Oh, no. You can never do that. Yeah, I didn't know. You you can never do that. Because it's worldwide before. And there's so many um, events that's going on mm. you can't tarnish it st- the, the events are still going to run we've moved past it but we're just talking about it anyway <laughs> yeah yeah um whether she tarnished it no she hasn't tarnished the culture or the dance and i think she's tarnished herself <laughs> yeah but not the culture you know you can't you cannot tarnish the culture it's impossible it's like you can't kill a revolution you know a revolutionist you know what i mean the real you know you, you have to understand about this it's too deep it's too deep you and know, Fred Hampton said, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest with you, it's, it's, it's like, you know, I saw many people making mockery of her, not the dance as such. Psychology. If you think about it, look at the yeah, psychology yeah. behind of what they're doing. They're mocking her, not yeah. the dance, you know? So she has really, you know, she's tarnished herself and her reputation. And I think she's she owes us an, uh, an apology at the same time, in my opinion. What, what what little video she came off with? That was no apology. I saw a narcissistic, um, <laughs> you know, like a narcissistic kind of, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like I said, it's sad that there's so many B girls that would have loved B girls train hard, because I know what it's like to train hard, and then you go to battle and you lose. It's not very nice. You no no B boy or B girl wants to train hard for battle and just go there to lose. We don't do that. When we train, we train to win. Mm. And you, you train you train for the Olympics. This is something on a high, you know, the biggest sporting, you know, event. You train to represent. Speaking quick jobs and country, everything, man. Yeah, yeah. Your country. Yeah. So I think she made a mockery of Australia and herself. Yeah. I think... Um all it will come down. Unfortunately, she's gonna get her bag regardless, in it, and no one can, no one can beef that because yeah. uh, that that's how things run. I think something that my pops brought up that I think is a very good point. If we get back to the Olympics, was say when you do sprinting, there's a time benchmark for the hundred meters, in it. Yeah, mm. you might be able to qualify in your country as the fastest sprinter in whichever little country, yeah. but if you can't run under this time, they won't let you on the Olympic stage because you're not yeah, competitive. If no, breaking no. gets its get back and gets to come back, fingers crossed, yeah. 2032 Brisbane, yeah. an amendment or addition needs to be made to the judging system of a benchmark. How did I do that? I don't know. But my dad had brought this up saying, hard. was there no quality control 
despite the, the and i went nah that wasn't saying went well mm. when you sprint if you can't run past this time yes. yeah. you're not reach you know and i went same as long well as i don't know how jump yeah. Over a you can't, and, yeah, yeah no matter you might be the fastest sprinter in afghanistan but uh yeah. we're not see afghanistan in the 100 meter yeah. finals car yeah. no one as we know is fast enough yet but yeah. i don't know how they do it in breaking but maybe that needs to be a conversation yeah come next time of yeah sure you won your continental championships but you're not good <laughs> not at this level anyway plenty of time to sort it out though yeah eight years in it let's go <laughs> and i got plenty of time to train up in that so mm, yeah i hear that by the time oh, just, that nine-year-old will be old by the time yeah by the time 2032 comes ray gun ain't gonna she's not gonna be there she, yeah, she's gonna be there. too old like it's it's just, we can only we can only go up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just, and like, can, yeah, true, for real. And and can I also make a, another point? What I see a lot of people posting, they think because of Raygun, breaking's not going to be in the next Olympics. It's got nothing yeah, to do with Raygun. Wild. It's got nothing to do with Raygun. Oh. This was discussed before the Olympics was even launched. The Olympics, you know, said, yeah. So you know all this talk about oh, because of her, you know, it's, it's incorrect. That's, that's one thing I want to point out. Oh, and I'll, I'll add to that as well. Mm. It happened to skating and BMXing. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, they yeah, they, yeah. they got one. They got one. The reason why this one is like yeah, the urban sport is because mm. BMXing's been in there, skating's been in there already. You can play skating on Marion Sonic mm. at the Olympic Games already. And then this was like, yo, the big three, like, this is the big three urban sports. Of it. And then, like, after that, you have, like, parkour, like, mm. but those ones aren't as big as the rest. So it was like, yeah, we got all three urban sports. They pushed it. Raygun just happened to just not be that good, but yeah. everyone else was good. Like, look how many skaters got there and just flaked or, like, tried to hit something big and just messed it up or just wasn't like you weren't memeing those people like i think the most thing i'm angry about is more of people like taking the mick like you don't take the mick out of the 1500 meters the person that got lapped four times mm -hmm. you don't you don't meme the boxer that got yeah. knocked out in 10 seconds you don't you don't meme that like oh yeah it's boxing oh yeah like fam every every sport has the top people and the worst people. Yeah, her apology should she should have been like, yo, everyone else was better than me. But I feel like she was just didn't say that because you was watching. Like you should have been watching. If you weren't watching, like first round she battled CC, bro. She smoked her like she got zero points. So the fact that you're locking in on the person that got zero points. You just you you bored like you just bored fam like everyone else like everyone else even the American boy was better than her. I mean not American Australian, but no one said anything about him. No one was like yo, J Attack was sick like Australia is wow. not that bad. But oh well fam. This is a mad mad insight into everything because you 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 really give me a totally different insight in how to look on things and it it, it is really about. Look at the positives rather than the negatives, because I just thought she was just straight of whack, and I just wanted to just <laughs> want to fire her. But when you look at the other, on the other side of things, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. Um, when I say thanks, going out to the Heritage Centre. There, the, we time is against us right about now. I know what's going to happen for the future. TV sound system. We're going to elevate this level of not just the sound system coach everybody knows but i want to individually have conversations with all of you bring you all back together another time sit down have the conversation so we're going to leave it like this and you only have to say the name without no reason okay there's no reason whatsoever because when we come back again we can talk about it greatest braid dancer of all time abstract abstract skill methods Hong Ten. <laughs> you heard how long? Yeah. And he said it, she went, come back. He was still smoking. It's Hong Ten. <laughs> I don't care if you don't meddle or anything. It's Hong Ten. For me, it's a generation thing. So for me, I've got to give it to Perverse, um, Lift to Break. Perverse is the style, everything. Ken Swift. Yeah. Rocks. Yeah. Seven Gems. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ken Swift for me. Ken Swift, but I'm probably changing it. <laughs>
<laughs> I hear Kenny in it. Like, I, I get it. I get it, dog. It's Ken, bro. It's Ken. Whole reason I danced the way I do was because I saw Kenny and went, right, Pruma. Uh, this this, my, this, this, I this, say to my, this my teacher. <laughs> yeah, after birdie, this oh, my teacher. Because. Oh. Yeah, because he's. <laughs> but Hong Ten. And there it is. <laughs> People, okay. we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wrap up everything. My favorite, my favorite, my favorite B, my favorite B boy and B girl of all time is right here in front of me. The Queen, the first that ever did it, the best of the best. Go and do your research. Don't get it twisted. I'm probably gonna get the most interviews than anybody else because it's family thing. Omar, AJ, <laughs> Omar, AJ, Omar, thank you so much, AJ, thank you so much. <laughs> Please pick up yourself. <laughs> Pablo, thank you so much. Big shout out to everybody. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We will be back here. We may try and uh, create some kind of yeah, segment, yeah, yeah. something. Some of the mothers and the fathers of the dance, some of them are not here to uh, yes. represent themselves. You have to be got the fathers and the mothers of the dance. This started from 1973. I mean, it's been debatable about the year. It started from 73 up to 75, around that, around that time. So look at the legacy here, you know what I mean? Many of these fathers and mothers of the pioneers from the Bronx, they're not here with us today, so we have to pay homage to them. If I could, I would have pour some libation, but you know, we don't have that Next now. Time. Next time. And that's it. What more can we say? Like, comment, share, subscribe. Look out for the next one. Crazy. We're out. Peace.